I'm going to talk about briefly how to make a standard solution, uh, a solution of something at a known concentration, and then how to dilute it to the concentration that you want it to be. Uh, so, to make a standard solution in a volumetric flask, what you do is you weigh out a certain amount of uh, solute. You could weigh out exactly one mole of something uh, and then put it in the volumetric flask. Then uh, you can use a wash bottle uh, and add uh, enough uh, water uh, to bring it up to this calibration mark. Uh, you're going to want to do it slowly, make sure that the meniscus hits just this exact uh, level, because if you add too much to this, then it is too dilute and you uh, do not actually have the concentration that you want it to be. Um, so if we wanted to make a 0.5 molar solution of copper 2 sulfite, sulfate pentahydrate, and we haven't talked about this too much, but penta, you know, uh, means 5, uh, and then hydrate just means that it has waters um, bound to it. Um, uh, which you don't need to worry about too much, just know it's part of the formula. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll discuss it. Uh, so you measure out 0.5 moles of the chemical, which is um, 124.8 grams of copper sulfate, 5-hydrate, uh, pentahydrate. Um, that just co comes from the molar mass of this solution. Uh, you add that into your volumetric flask, uh, then you add the water to dissolve the flask and you carefully fill it uh, until it hits uh, this uh, thousand liter mark. And remember the meniscus is going to bring it right there. Uh, and then you're going to restopper it and invert it several times to make sure that it is uh, very well mixed. That is how you'd make 0.5 molar solution. So let's talk about dilutions. Dilutions um, are how you take something that is concentrated, remember concentrated means has lots of solute relative to the amount of volume it's in, the amount of solvent that it's in, uh, and uh, dilutions allow you to, to bring it down to something that's, that's easier uh, to work with. So uh, solutions come in a concentrated form, like you're going to buy uh, something that's very concentrated, like an acid that's very, very concentrated, and then you're going to dilute it by adding water. Um, and since just adding water doesn't mean you change the solution, the amount of moles of the actual solute, um, then, then they're not going to change before and after. But what will go down when you increase the water is the uh, molarity, the concentration. Uh, think it's just like Kool-Aid, right? If you have a you know, really, really sweet Kool-Aid, um, but it's too sweet for you, uh, a really, really sweet lemonade, too sweet for you, you can add water and you can make it uh, so that it's not as sweet, it's not as concentrated. Um, so the relationship is inverse. Uh, what we can do is we can use this formula. M1V1 equals M2V2. This is something I used in the lab a lot too. We would make a standard solution and then uh, store it and then anytime I needed to use it, uh, I could um, dilute it, uh, take some out, dilute it, and I would have the, the actual concentration that I need. So M1, this is our starting concentration. V1 is our initial volume that we use. M2 is our final concentration. And V2 is our final total volume. So uh, I can ask the question, how much concentrated 18 molar sulfuric acid is needed to prepare 250 milliliters of a 6 molar solution. So we can use M1 V1 equals M2 V2. And our M1 is our, our starting concentration. It's always going to be higher. Uh, in this case. So we have 18 molar, 18.0 M times uh, V1, which we don't really know. Um, so that's our variable. Equals M2, we know 600 or 6.00 
molar, and we do know our V2. It's 250 ml. Now, if you're worried about uh, messing up thinking molarity and messing up volume, uh, then you can switch this to liters, but it doesn't really matter as long as you keep your units and you're paying attention to what your units are. Uh, that's why I say units are important. I'm going to keep them just to make your life a little easier and stress the importance of keeping them. So uh, we have V1 equals this, right? And then we want to solve for V1, so we divide by 18 point zero molar on both sides 18 point zero molar uh, and we have uh, molar cancels, molar cancels, 18 cancels, 18 cancels over here we have molar cancers, molarity cancels and so we have 6 divided by 18 uh, or 6 times 250 divided by 18, which is 250 uh, divided by 3, which means V1 equals, equals 6 times 250 divided by 18 gives us uh, 83.3 milliliters. Um, 83.3 milliliters. And again, this isn't liters because we had milliliters as our starting unit. It came out of the problem. If you're careful with your units, you're okay. 83.3 three sig figs. First example. Example two. Uh, if I have 750 milliliters of a 12 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, um, and I add 500 milliliters of water to it, what is the new concentration? Now this is a little trickier, uh, but you really you're just doing the same thing. So, uh, same problem. We have M1 V1 equals M2 V2 and we know our M1 again it's going to be higher, 12.0 uh, molar, and we even know our V1 now because this is our starting uh, volume, uh, times 750 ml, that equals our M2, which is our unknown new concentration, and our V2, which we also have. Uh, but our V2 is not 500 milliliters. It is 750 plus 500. So we're going to say 750 plus 500 milliliters. Uh, that gives us uh, 1250. Yes, equals M2, uh, and our V2 is 1250 ml. Now, we're solving for M2, so we divide by 1250 milliliters on both sides. Again, 1250 milliliters. If you're being careful about units, it should work out every single time because we have uh, mLs, mLs. We have uh, molarity, which is what we're looking for. So then we just math it out. We have 12.0 times uh, 750 divided by 1250, and we get 7.2 and actually it's 7.20 for three sig figs uh, molar equals the molarity that's it 7.2 sorry it's so ugly 
Yeah, that's, uh, that's dilutions. And what that means is I can take 750 milliliters of 12 molar and I can add exactly 500 milliliters to it. And then I can find out the new concentration of it if I added to it. If I wanted to do it reflexively and I wanted it to make it 7.2 molars using this equation, I could solve and figure out how much water I needed to add to it. I use this on my bench top very, very frequently to figure out exactly how much I needed of a solution. So, uh, hopefully that, that will make your life a uh, little bit better on knowing how to work with this. It's a great skill to have as anyone who works in a research lab, and, uh, and it's good to work with here.